You're now listening to Dark Matter with Michael Parker, right here on KarmaAir.com. Welcome back, Truth Seekers. How's it going? My name is Michael Parker. It is the 3rd of June, and we are welcoming to the show today Marie D. Jones. We are going to be talking about science and the supernatural, trying to prove certain aspects of the supernatural with what we know um, regarding science and especially quantum physics. Let me read you a little bit about Marie right quick. Marie has been involved with the paranormal for most of her life, including over 15 years as a trained field investigator for both MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, and KUFOS, Center for UFO Studies. She's a member of Fate Magazine's research community. She also formed two local UFO paranormal research organizations in Southern California. Marie's a licensed New Thought Metaphysics Minister and Pastoral Counselor. Um, she is currently pursuing a Doctor of Divinity status. She studied Wicca, Hermetica, Goddess Traditions, Mythology, and Comparative Religion. She's written several books, including Looking for God in All the Wrong Places, which garnered great reviews. It was the best spiritual religious book of 2003 by Rebecca'sReads.com, and it made the top 10 of 2003's list at MyShelf.com. Her new book is Science, and uh, we're going to be discussing this and I've got a lot of questions for Marie. So without further ado, Marie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Well, thank you so much for coming coming on the show. Um, in, in a matter of full disclosure, I have to tell everybody that I found Marie on uh, MySpace, and I was, looking at, <laughs> I, I was looking at her page, and I was reading about her. I was like, wow, I've, I've got to have this person on the show because, um, like myself, you, you're, you're a seeker, and you've got a background at one point actually in the music industry as well, in the entertainment industry. And you're also uh, a MUFON uh, former field investigator. I'm not a field investigator, but I am um, a member of the board of MUFON LA. And I guess let's start kind of at the beginning. I know that your father was a geophysicist. Is that correct? He, yeah, and he, he's retired now. But. Now, is he, I mean, how did you get influenced to look into more of this um, alternative view of science? I, I'm assuming that he's pretty much a hardcore, more uh, hard science type person. Is, uh, he didn't have a whole lot of influence on me in that direction. It, well, here's what happened. I was raised with a scientist father and a very spiritual mother. Fantastic. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. But my dad's always been very open-minded about uh, not sticking to the status quo and not always just looking at what's been published and what, you know, the, the standard research that's being done in any field of science. But really, my interest just came about on my own from when I was very young. I don't really know why. I've just always been fascinated with what you couldn't quite see Mm -hmm. beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And having a scientist for a father meant that I had a lot of science books around the house, and I had access to science. And having a mom who was very spiritual and very open-minded and creative meant that I got to do something with it that was out of the ordinary. Well, I, I know that you're currently authoring a book with your father. Is that correct? Actually, we're done. Okay, okay. <laughs> it comes out the end of August. And it's Give us called... the title of that, because I want to talk a little bit about that before we discuss oh, we science. Will. It's going to be a big one, and, and I mean that literally as well as figuratively. Right. It's called Super Volcano, okay. the catastrophic event that changed the course of human history. Now, so when I first saw the title, immediately the first thing that came to my mind is the uh, the caldera under Yellowstone. But I guess you're talking about a super volcano that has happened in, in history. We're already. doing a bit of both. What we are doing is we're focusing on a, a super volcano called Toba that erupted about 74, 75,000 years ago in Sumatra. Okay. And it literally drove the human species to near extinction. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of genetic evidence that's come out over the last 10 years or so indicating that every single person on Earth today is a genetic survivor of, or a genetic descendant of a survivor of Toba. Wow. And so that's kind of like the first chunk of the book. But we also talk about what super volcanoes are, where they are, and which ones we believe could possibly uh, cause a super eruption. I will tell you this, Yellowstone is one of them, Mm -hmm. but it's not the one we focus on. There's another that we believe is even more threatening. Which, what is that? It's Long Valley, California. But I'm not going to tell you why until you have me back on the show when oh, the book absolutely. is out in August. <laughs> Excellent. I, I, we'll definitely have you back on. Yeah, Long Valley. I'm not sure. Sh- 
Well, I, Long I, Valley. I'm not sure where that is. Where Where is that in California? It's, uh, right, it's in the Mammoth Lakes area. Well, Mammoth. you got to tell me this, though, or, or maybe you don't, but I'll ask you anyway. I mean, is there something there uh, that I would see right now? Would I see a mountain there, or would I see a crater with it water in it? Well, okay. It is a caldera. It is a caldera. It's um, smaller than the Yellowstone's biggest caldera. But, you know, we write a lot in the book about some very, very recent cutting-edge studies that have come out that um, – and again, I hate to you know I hate to talk about it too soon because it's a really interesting thing. Um, but there is a reason why Long Valley is is a little bit more of a threat, to, especially to those of us in California, yes. than Yellowstone. Wow, because uh, but but they both are very threatening. And listen, if they both if there's a super eruption at either one, we're gone. Uh, but again, we also want to let people know that we're the chances of that happening are not huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but super volcanoes are amazing. They're one of the only major catastrophic events, if not the only one, that cannot be prevented in mm-hmm. any way, shape, or form. This one, you said it was Toba. Is that T-O-B-A? Toba, T-O-B-A. And it's funny because not a lot of people know about it. No, and yet I... it was one of the most instrumental uh, events in our own genetic or evolutionary history. Because what happened is our numbers got so small Mm -hmm. as a result of the climate change Mm -hmm. and the the volcanic winter that genetically it just completely altered what the surviving line of human beings was going to look like and what it was going to be like. Wow. And it's really amazing to know that there are these stories out there that nobody's told yet, and yet they affect every single one of us. And you say that was 75,000 years ago. A- approximately 74, 75,000 years ago. It's weird because I, I, I'm fascinated by ancient civilizations and, and things of this nature. And I mean, I, I've heard a lot of talk about the idea of some kind of catastrophic event, approximately 10,500, oh, yeah, right. 11, five, something like that. Right, and, but but that I've one. never heard about this one. No. And it's funny because there's not a whole lot of geological evidence for Toba. There's enough that they know something happened. There's more genetic evidence. And when you put the two together, it's created, the, it's sort of, you have these uh, two missing pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And between the two, the geological evidence that they were able to find and the genetic evidence complete this puzzle that has baffled scientists for, for years. Why are we so, why is our DNA so similar. Mm-hmm. Why, are, why is there so little differentiation in the human species? Chimpanzees have so much more. And this is the kind of stuff that we get into. It's not just a book about, oh, look how big and awesome super volcanoes are. I mean, we really talk about genetics, about what evolutionary history of the human species. When Toba erupted, why some lines of human, human beings died out and some survived. So it's really fascinating. But again, because it happened so long ago, we don't have as much information as we do for the event that you're talking about, which I've read so many books on. You know, it sounds like it was a sort of a flyby with a yes. chunk of another planet or a meteor or a comet. Right. And we've got a lot more information about that event. And yet the funny thing is, is that scientists have been able to use that event to extrapolate some information about what might have happened at the time of Toba. Wow, that's that's fascinating. Like, yeah, I, I, it's really. I, I I suppose that when this this particular cataclysm, and and I won't ask you too much more about this because I know you want to save it for the, <laughs> for the next interview. But when this particular cataclysm happened, I mean, this was a global event, and you you, you mentioned volcanic winter for which for folks who don't know that would be like a nuclear winter. So Same I guess thing. this this dust Same. just encapsulates the entire planet and right. screws everything up. It, a lot of people say, well, you know, gee, Mount St. Helens erupted and I'm still alive. We're not talking about a little piddly, vol- you know, cone-shaped volcano. We're mm-hmm. talking about a monster. We're talking about something that it, if it were to super erupt, uh, 